as for pledge to flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Uh, would the secretary perform a roll call attendance, please? Here. 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 Okay. Um, all the board members have received the minutes from the secretary for the March 21st meeting. Uh, if there's no questions or concerns, uh, entertain a Motion to accept the minutes. So made. Second. Okay. Motion made. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Uh, our first item on the agenda this evening, it is a adjourned public hearing for a site plan and special use permit for Myers Corners Road self-storage amended site plan. Uh, okay. Motion to open the adjourned public hearing. So made. Second. Second. Okay, motions made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Good evening. Mark Day, Dave Sikosa. Uh, we're here tonight to uh, present again the um, proposed project, uh, which is uh, known as 16, 169 Myers Corners. It's an existing 222,000 222, square foot building, two story. Uh, been vacant for a number of years. Uh, we've been, uh, our client is looking to do self storage. Um, and basically that's, that's really it. Not a lot of uh, exterior improvements other than the uh, landscape islands we are now proposing in the parking area. And there's two new entrances being proposed and a ramp at one of the existing loading docks so uh, smaller vehicles can access. Okay. Um, all right. Might as well start with. Um, I guess we do have. A, there's a couple of open-ended items. You did receive the letters from both the planner yeah, and the and engineer. To make it short, I, I have no. I, we see uh, John's memo. We're we're fine with. Um, actually, we're fine with the other memo, except there is an issue with uh, the second freestanding sign, which. I would like to ask the board for a waiver because apparently the code states you can only have one freestanding sign. We would like one on Myers Corners. I think I need one back here because if, as you drive back there, you can get there and not realize you got to keep going to get to the application. So right. I was hoping the board would be okay with two signs. Yeah. I think we agree with that. I think okay. with the, the site signage to get yourself the freestanding to lead you to the building. Um, but I guess there was also some questions regarding the actual location of the signage on the building. Yeah, there's, there's these are the uh, renderings that were prepared by the project architect, Mark Feeney. Uh, I did speak to them. Uh, they're going to eliminate their logo. So that should limit us to a sign that's about 78 square feet in size on the front. Now, there is an issue with it being facing the R40. I, there really is no other place you can put the sign. This is the front of the building. The signage, as I remember, from when Global Foundries and others were in there, was on this face. Um, it's approximately 500 feet from the boundary line to the east. And which, as many of you may know, is not developed. I mean, it's, I don't even think it can develop it. Uh, yeah. It's Central Hudson's right away. Yeah. What we, yeah, th uh, this is in the list of, of things um, in the comment memo, but I didn't forget to mention this during the, the workshop. There, there's a provision of the code that a, a commercial sign cannot be facing uh, a residential district. But of course, given the geography of this site and the location of the main entrance, I think it makes sense to waive that. It's not a backlit sign, right? No. Yeah, so. Yeah. yeah. None of the signs are backlit. Yeah, uh, the two signs we're talking about, the freestanding, it's they're four foot tall, it's basically what's there now. Uh, there's another section of the code, I think, which stipulates 
uh, proximity to uh, front and side. Front we can meet, side I can't because the easement that is owned uh, by the applicant for that both entrance and the sign is not wide enough to get me uh, the separation that we it's need. It's more than 15 feet away from a side? I could be wrong. Uh, it's check. not. It's uh, the best I can do is probably about eight feet. Yeah. Because of the width of the driveway and the width of the easement. Yeah. So that's another provision of the signage code. You have to be more than 15 feet away from a side lot line. Again, given the location of the access drive and where it is, I think it makes a lot of sense to waive it. You wouldn't want it farther away. I don't see any issue with this. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Um. So the, the logo is being removed. Yes, that'll be removed. The square footage of the, the wall-mounted sign checks out. 78 square feet, I think 78, it is. okay. Um, I'll double check that. I, th okay. I thought it was bigger than that, but I'll, I'll, I could have done the math wrong. And then the other question we had was um, the, the loading signs above oh, the loading we're, bays. We're gonna get you want to take those down? Take them out. You sure? Yeah, I'd rather, I just want to get rid of I mean, honestly, if it's a garage door. If you don't know that's a loading area, Keep driving around until you figure it out. Okay. So we're <laughs> going to take them off. You should yeah. have you should yeah. have it marked out. Yeah. It should say I, loading zone. Yeah. I don't I don't think we have we I don't think we have issues with with those type of signs. Okay. Yeah. Directional. You know. Again, with with the items that were brought up at the previous meeting. Um, yeah. You know, with people driving around, it's actually kind of makes sense to put a. If they're going to drive around the back of that building to get to that upper level at some point, okay, it probably makes sense to have a sign there or some type of uh, sign that says, you know, loading for second floor or whatever. Yeah, it I is. just want to be careful because I think it requires a variance, no? No, they would just require a planning board waiver. Oh, okay. Well, that's why we're discussing it yeah, now okay. because we have the ability to, to do that without a, a variance to okay. be granted. If anything, uh, I think the planning board expressed interest in specifying, instead of it just reading loading, having, you know, the one on the west side of the building saying, west loading okay. uh, and then east loading and that way you know we can um, do that you know the website or the operator speaking to somebody on the phone can specify which loading bay they should be arriving at that makes sense we can do that okay and then there was a discussion about what cube smart or whatever the business name was so that onto the on, onto the actual on the loading on the side. sign yeah oh okay so they keep it you know reasonable size yeah thing. i mean it, they're going to be you know something small so. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah okay and they're not going to be backlit or anything yeah New, but it gives the cube smart west loading cube smart east yeah. loading or whatever okay side of the building it's on yeah. or loading one loading two i mean however you want to identify them but okay um just to make it easier for especially for newcomers navigating the site okay we can do that. That's simple. Um, the only other question, uh, the lights. Uh, I can't find a light <laughs> with a lower BUG. I talked to the uh, applicant. They're like, take them off. They're very small, so we're just going to take them off. Okay. So, um, they're only, we're going to, they're going to be on, uh, they're going to be on a motion detector anyway, if they were there. Mm -hmm. So they wouldn't be on at night unless somebody shows up. And the site's already lit pretty, pretty well. well right i mean it, it does have pole lights it does all the way around mm -hmm. the, the the ring road um okay that's up to the board i was curious how those overhead lights over the loading bay would interact with you know say like a box truck or something what they're kind of just, shadows they would they're just gonna they would light up if you backed up to yeah. yeah okay does that become a safety issue if there's no lighting there well, that's my the winter, problem. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm hesitant to just take them off the building. Well, yeah. the problem is with these things, and I know there's you know, your code. If you, I, I can't locate, and I asked the landscape architect, he can't find anything like that that has the BUG rating. So that's you know we're. You can't only, find a, a BUG. Like they don't have a BUG rating, or you can't find one with the lower. Well, <laughs> it's one of that, uh, or they don't list it, or it's not low enough. So. You know, so the applicants like, look, just take them off. You know, we, but they're they're not really going to affect anybody. The house is so far away, it's wooded. I mean, if if it had to be up just a little bit more to make it so that it's a safety issue, then put a light there. Well, if you guys are okay with the lights we've got, I don't know. We didn't see them on. <laughs> You mean on the building or on? Yeah. Like everything was on. It's on. on. They weren't on. The building lights were on. I think the parking light lights yeah, weren't on. Yeah. The ring road lights need to be repaired. There's a yeah. bunch of them that there are out. There was nothing that was out of the norm that. No. 
yeah. overpowering. Yeah. Well, I mean, the the lights that we're talking about aren't up yet, right? Yeah, they're not. Right. Right. They they not. This the stuff that's so going on the building it's itself. Scary. We're talking about. Yeah, I think it was two or three wall packs. Something that's it. Like that. they're, they're small little units that will yeah. go up over the overhead doors. They'll be activated uh, by motion sensors. So if you back up, you know they'll come off. If you're unloading a truck or a car, what have you. They'll be lit, so you can get in and out. Yeah. And then they go off. And it's a. Uh, sorry. And then they go off. Yeah. And then they go off when you're done. No, I like the idea of it being lit. I was just saying, you know. I just we're having we're struggling. Just having. Yeah. I've never I've never run into that issue. And this um, is a this is a down this is a, a down light. Yes. It's, Everything's focused down downward. Well, it right. should be, but it's not shielded in any way. It will. I mean, if if it has an uprating of of five, it's gonna be a big circle of light around it. That's, that's why the up light is at five, yeah. just because you know it's not gonna cause any glare, it's not gonna cause any backlight because it's up on the wall. But if it's got an up rating of five, it's, it's not going to be downward directional. It's just going to be a big circle of light around it. It's gonna light up everything around it in a full sphere. Is it top, if it's top shielded? It's not top shielded. Okay. If it was top shield, then it wouldn't have an operating five. It's basically that, that unit. Oh, okay. I, I mean, right. I, again, I've, I've never gone out looking for a, a light to add to a plan, but I've, I've seen a lot of plans with bug ratings of, you know, ones across the board. I've never right, run into right. an issue of somebody not being able to find well, some a light. Of them, you know, I agree, but some, some of the manufacturers don't even provide that part. Yeah. But you can see this is basically a down light. It's, it's aimed basically downward. And they're small fixtures. They're not yeah. Yeah. Um, that's probably the actual size. It's, it's tiny. Um, but it's an LED light, so it provides yeah. enough downward. And it's, you know, for what it doesn't reach very far. Everything around it is between three and right. four and a half foot candles. I mean, it'll be bright at that light. It's going to be really bright at that light. Which is where right. you want it to be. Right. It's yeah. People are loading and unloading. Exactly. That's where you want light. Right. Yeah. If it's going to go off, I don't, I don't even see this as an issue. No. Okay. I don't either. Right. Other than that, we so you guys are okay. So everybody's okay with that light then? Yes. Okay. And other than that, I, we take no exception with all, any of the other comments. Yeah, the only, only thing I think we, we were discussing earlier was just just putting a note somewhere or if it has to be put into the resolution, I guess, just uh, the ring road repairs. Yeah, I just for a ring road light repairs and, and asphalt, which I yeah, think yeah, John points out. Maybe. Yeah, he pointed out, but that's when we were out there for the field trip, um, there was a couple of weeks ago. Um, you know, we all kind of noticed that's pretty tore up. Yeah. <laughs> so if they at least patch it up, you know, because if you're going to have people yeah, if it starts going to around there, be, traffic. Be, be to their advantage to have a, you know, yeah. where they're not driving through those potholes. Yeah, no, I agree. We agree. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Anybody else have anything? Okay. Um, all right. Does anybody from the public have any comments or concerns, being this is still an adjourned public hearing? Okay. So nobody has any comments. Um, go ahead and um, make a motion to close the public hearing. So made. Second. Okay. Motion's made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Okay. Um, all right. So, with the so Malcolm with the signage, you're satisfied with with it. What has yeah, been presented sure tonight that, that kind of clarifies. Sure that, yeah. Uh, to right. make sure that we're all on the same page, we're going to keep Cube Smart, um, but they're going to strike the logo. We're keeping the loading bay signage um, with the modifications we've discussed, non-specified, but yeah, unique, we'll identify unique them. loading. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, we're keeping the two freestanding signs, and we're yep. keeping their location and proximity to the side lot line. Right. I don't think I missed anything. Okay. Um, and I believe but we you should make a, a 
have to make we a need to make to a motion to waive, waive the the, yeah. the signage requirement or the um, and the light on the thing. Yeah, the light on the loading dock. I don't think you need to. No, make the a, light a is. I think the light's okay. acceptable based okay. upon the current code. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So we're okay there. <clears throat> so the lighting's okay. So um, we need to make a motion to waive the requirements I'll make that motion. for the signage on the site. Okay. Motions made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. All right. Um, so the only thing I guess at this point is really just I guess cleaning it up. Um, are we okay to go ahead and go for a? Uh, Go ahead with the res uh, start preparing a resolution. I think so. Yeah, um, I would instruct me to draft a, a negative declaration as well. Yes, and a negative declaration as well. Correct. Um, I'll make that motion to do the resolution so and the negative declaration. Is there a special I'll use permit? That motion. Is yes. that because it's storage? Is there a special use permit? I didn't think yeah. self storage oh. was special. Use. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. And it, okay. Yeah, I think it is. So a resolution for amended site plan and right. So okay. So so we're amending it to the um, to a negative declaration, uh, site plan approval, and special use permit. Okay. So yep. all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Thank you. And that'll be on the uh, 18th of this month. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Have a good night. Okay. Okay. Our next item on the agenda this evening is a discussion during the Central Hudson KM electric transmission line replacement. Good evening. Hi, good evening. My name is Anthony Miranda. I'm Cuddy and Fader here for Central Hudson. Brian Demisco, Central Hudson Project Manager. Okay. Um, okay, you've received the paperwork from the planner. Um, I did. Let me just get my. Uh, okay, so it was the uh, negative declaration. Um, okay, so at this point, I think we've gotten to the point where we can go ahead and declare the negative declaration for the project. Um, is tonight we're just going to vote on this. So I'll entertain a motion to approve the negative declaration so as second. drafted. All right, motion's made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. All right. Um, okay, with this, I guess all the other items uh, regarding the site plan uh, for this replacement project, everything's been satisfied. Or at least enough to where it can be anything that's outstanding could be conditional within the yeah. uh, resolution. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so with that, um, does anybody want to make a motion to go ahead and approve the planner to draft a resolution of final approval? So moved. Second. Okay. Motion's made. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Question, are those uh, poles that we talked about last time, are they a solid through and through, or is it just an aluminum coating? It's a steel, oh. it's a steel pole. St the pole is but steel? But it's not a solid steel pole. It's so it's a steel, steel wrapping around, with steel the wood wrapping. in between? No, no I'm sorry. Hollow. No. It's hollow in hollow between. Steel. Yes. Yes. There's no wood yet. Yeah. Yeah. What's the weight of those? Just curious, what's the weight of those? Is it like much less than the existing wood ones yeah. that we're getting rid of? No. Yes. Well, they're going to be uh, heavier than the wood poles. No kidding. Oh, no doubt. Yeah. Because the aluminum is heavy. Yeah. Well, it's steel. 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 Excuse me. Yeah, right. Steel. Right. And okay. don't forget, wood degrades over time. Yeah. Right? It yeah. Dries, cracks. It's bad over time. Splits. Yeah, woodpeckers, et cetera. Exactly. Yeah. That'll really lighten the pole. Okay, great. Okay. All right, so I guess it's a matter of getting the uh, resolution drafted for final approval, and Great. Uh, we'll go from there. So okay. For April 18th, also. Yeah. For what? April 18th. Yeah, April 18th, I believe, would be the date. So unless, unless you guys want to. No, no. So I, I don't know. In, in my business, <laughs> you never stop you like a board from approving something. Trust me. 
Uh, no, I mean, I think we're going we're gonna to get back to the town of Poughkeepsie now over the next couple months, but it doesn't okay. mean that has to hold up this board approving the application. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, I mean, that's what yeah. we had that discussion. And yeah. So because, basically, now that the MEG deck yeah. is, is, has been issued, each board can proceed. Yeah, at this, po at this point, we're going, they we're both independent of one another. So mm -hmm. with, with the passing of the negative declaration. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Great. Well, thank you. All right, you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't hear that. So, uh, um, good night. great. And B, I have a couple okay. extra green cards we got. Back. Thank you so much, Eric. Right. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. Just um, while I'm thinking about this, as Locust Tree is, is setting up, um, B and I went back through the record. There had been discussion about waiving the public hearing for Locust Tree, but the motion had never actually been made. So the resolution reflects that the board, uh, I, I have assumed that, they, that you intended to waive that public hearing. So the resolution reflects that the public hearing is waived today. So before any motions are made, make sure that you make a, a motion. Before to we, the public okay. Hearing. Yeah. All right. So it wasn't, uh, I know we discussed it, but I remember I thought the there discussion, was a vote. but there was never actually a vote. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So, obviously, you've uh, received the resolution for the planner? Yes, I have. Okay. Even though we didn't waive the public hearing? <laughs> yes. Um, all right. You take no exception. <laughs> all right. So, we'll start. Uh, so why don't we start with, uh, first, somebody wants to make a motion to go ahead and waive the public hearing for the amended site plan approval? I'll make that motion. Second. Okay. Motion's made. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. So the motion carries. All right. Um, with the way the resolution of the draft, there's no questions or concerns. Okay. Nope. Um, all right. So with that, um, I'll entertain a motion to... Approve the resolution as drafted. So moved. Second. second. Okay. Motion's made. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Nope. Okay. Motion carries. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank Have you a good very evening. much. You too. Okay, so next item on the agenda this evening is the site plan special use permit for Downey Energy Liquid Propane Storage. Um, I guess we're, uh, as a board, we might as well go through the part two, um, the uh, environmental assessment form. And so, with the planner, um, I gave everybody's got a copy of the checklist now, so. Um, we go through each section. And, so, uh, um, to uh, a point that was raised um, by um, uh, member uh, Sarah previously, um, the, as far as what constitutes a significant impact, um, in making a determination of significance, um, it's under uh, 6 NYCRR 617.7 um, and says that the, the lead agency must determine the significance of any type one or unlisted action um, in, re, uh, in writing in accordance with the section and to require the pro, uh, an, an environmental impact statement for the project, the lead agency must determine that the action may include the potential for at least one significant adverse environmental impact to determine that an EIS will not be required, otherwise known as a NEG deck, um, you, you, the lead agency must find that there's no adverse environmental impacts, um, or that the adver adverse environmental impacts identified will not be significant. Um, part two um, of the EAF has the various criteria, the full EAF, uh, of what should be continued, considered um, under the statute um, and then with respect to um, whether or not an, ad, um, an action may cause one of the consequences, the lead agency must consider reasonably related 
long-term, short-term, direct, indirect, and cumulative impacts um, inclu uh, included with respect to the project or um, any um, including any long-range plan of which the action is considered a part of, likely to be in undertaken as a result of the project or dependent thereon, wasn't, isn't particularly relevant here. But then the significance of a likely consequence, i.e. whether it is material, substantial, large, or important, should be assessed in connection with its setting, i.e. urban or rural here, you know, you would also add commercial or residential. Its probability of occurrence, in essence, what's the probability of it happening? Its duration, its, irreversi its irreversibility, its geographic scope, its magnitude, and the number of people affected. So when we talked about whether or not, so that's the criteria you look at as to making a determination is whether the impact that is being considered is significant or not. Having said that, um, if I guess Malcolm can. Yeah, he'll take us through it. So, um, at direction of the board, I prepared uh, the EAF part two and part three two weeks ago at the request of the applicant. Uh, that was tabled for the past two weeks, waiting uh, feedback uh, input uh, from the applicant. Now, we've received some correspondence from the applicant, but as far as I know, we have not received any input or comment on the EAF part two or part three. So um, we'll move forward. Um, I prepared this as a, as a jumping off point. We can absolutely modify this as we discuss it. Um, so number one is an, is an impact on land. Um, I skimmed through and checked off no, but we can go through to make sure. Um, you have something? Yeah. Um, there's no exposed bedrock on that property? I think towards the very, very back of it, but not where they're proposing to construct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think as you get to Route 9, yeah, the there's some exposed, face, there's that yeah. cliff. Yeah. 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 So there is exposed bedrock, but it's, it's a pretty large site in comparison to what is okay. being proposed. Yeah. Um, so um, 1A, the proposed action may involve the construction of land where depth to the mm -hmm. water table is less than three feet. Um, the EAF part one suggested that the depth to um, the water table is, is more than three feet across the board. Um, proposed action may involve construction on slopes of 15% or greater. That's not occurring. Uh, the proposed action may involve construction on land where bedrock is exposed or generally within five feet of existing ground surface. Uh, that's not proposed, although there is exposed bedrock. Um, the proposed action may involve the uh, excavation and removal of more than 1,000 tons of natural material. Um, I don't believe so. I, don't, I know that they are proposing to bury the tanks, but that's above ground. And I know that they're also proposing to um, put in a, a water reservoir for firefighting purposes, but I don't think that that amounts to more than 1,000 tons Probably of material not. being excavated. No, might end up working out as a cut and fill anyway. They'll take out the hole and bury that on the tanks. So uh, the proposed action may involve construction that continues for more than one year or in multiple phases. I don't believe that that is true. Uh, the proposed action may result in increased erosion, whether from physical disturbance or vegetated removal, um, including treatment by herbicides. Um, I don't believe that that is true. Um, the proposed action is or may be located within a coastal erosion hazard area, and that's yeah. um, Geologic features is going to follow something similar. Um, I checked off no, but we can go through it. Um, there's a discussion of specific landforms. There are no uh, yeah. specific landforms or national natural landmarks present on the site that would be affected. Um, Impacts on surface water, uh, I checked yes. Now there's a, there's a few of these before we get to I, which is, is where I'm suspecting moderate to large impact as a, as a potential, but we can go through them. The proposed action may create a new water body. That's not happening. The proposed action may result in an increase or decrease of over 10% or more. 
than a 10 acre increase or decrease in surface area of any body of water. We're not, not, we're not changing any bodies of water here. <clears throat> um, the proposed action may involve dredging more than 100 cubic yards of material from a wetland or water body. That's not happening. Uh, the proposed action may involve construction within or adjoining a freshwater or tidal wetland or in the bed or banks of any other water body. Um, that is a question. I know that there is a wetland across the street. Um, is a wetland considered a trapped area of water? Because on that property at the base, they have a big trapped area of water. And New Wiki just did that other thing um, with gas. Gas, gas land? company. No, yeah. not gas land. Uh, the, the BJ's. BJ's. Fuel and they just found that area that had trapped yeah, I don't, um, water, so that property does have trapped water on it at well, the base we should, along the road. We should make amendment to this. Because I know that there is a regulated water body across the site. There and I know that Nowicki yeah. yeah, provided a wetland report. Yeah, I don't, I mean. Let me circle this. We'll go back and look at Nowicki's report. Yes. Um, <clears throat> But he was looking at across the street. We didn't ask him to look at this property, did we? I think well, he would have. No, he he looked at this. Yeah. He would have. <coughs> he looked at this Because yeah. I just brought to mind that we I mean, just the saw it over there at BJ's. Yeah. This I mean, has typically, a very similar situation. Yeah. So typically, a wetland is not just trapped of water. Yeah. It has to have what are called hydric soils and certain. Well, he, other he'd have to go determine that. Indicia, yeah. I don't, I don't think any wetlands were flagged on this site, but I will double check. I'm also curious, Jim, if you have, um, what defines adjoining a freshwater? Well, here you've got um, a, the, the, the buff, is the buffer marked on the? I think the buffer goes onto their property, if I remember right. From the, the from the wetland across <coughs> right. the street, it extends onto the front. The I buffer mean, I, is onto right. the front of their property. Right, yeah. and I think the construction was out. I mean, I think for purposes of that, you know, with construction in a buffer would be adjacent to. Mm -hmm. So, to the extent it's outside the, the construction is outside the buffer, I think it would not be adjacent to the wetland. There would be construction of entrance drives in the buffer, though. Right, would that constitute. Probably, yes. I yeah. don't think construction in a buffer would constitute. Okay. I'll highlight this. Yep. I'll revisit this. Um, the proposed action may create turbidity in a water body, either from upland erosion, runoff, or by distributing bottom sediments. That's not happening. We're not impacting any lakes or streams here. Um, the proposed action may include construction of one or more intakes or withdrawals of water from surface water. That's not happening. The proposed action may include construction of one or more outfalls or discharges of wastewater into the surface water. We don't have any surface water here. No. Um, the proposed action may cause ero uh, soil erosion or otherwise create a source of stormwater discharge that may lead to siltation or other degradation of receiving water bodies. I don't think we have an issue with here, that here. Um, I know that they were talking about um, a vegetated uh, swale in the front of their property. Um, I was satisfied with the design and construction of that. Um, if we get into runoff, though, that's more your area, but I don't remember that being a red flag for this particular project. No, I mean, that all that review was done before I got involved with this, but that, there were no but carryover comments yeah. regarding okay. the storm order, so. Um, and this is I. The proposed action may affect the water quality of any water bodies within or downstream of the site of the proposed action. Um, I flag this given the nature of the site, the use, um, what's being stored there, and its proximity to wetlands and uh, yep. the water table. Yep. Um, the proposed action may involve uh, the application of pesticides or herbicides in or around any water body. I don't believe that that's being proposed. The proposed action may require the construction of new or, expand, uh, or the expansion of existing wastewater treatment facilities. That's not happening. So that's our surface water. So to the, to the wetland issue, yeah. I guess there is a, a wetlands DEC um, determination. 
termination of or a flag that was flagged. Um, it was submitted, uh, and it indicates that there's basically the adjacent buffer is on the front of the property. Mm -hmm. So uh, there would be construction within the buffer. Okay. Other questions to include? The DEC application won't be complete until Seeker is done. Right, so they couldn't even, so they couldn't even go to the DEC. Um, and I think there's also wetlands on the rear of the property. If I'm remembering correctly, I did not think that that was close enough to the proposed construction to flag it, but if there's construction within the buffer, I think that Yeah, I mean, the buffer, according to something that was submitted, is the 100 foot buffer is along the whole front frontage of the property. Yeah. Really Which means that the access drives would be yeah. construction yeah, within. Something. Okay, so I will flag that as well. Um, impacts to groundwater. Uh, the proposed action may require new water supply wells or create additional demand on supplies from existing water supply wells. Um, Isn't that a yes? Or no? I had checked no. I was under the impression that the tank underground that they had proposed was going to be filled by uh, water trucks and not by wells. John, do you remember? I, I, I thought there was a proposed well to be drilled. I'll double check that. Yeah. Well, there is, a, there, is a proposed, there is a proposed well on the property. Yeah. I believe they have a well and septic system to, uh, I believe they said they were servicing one bathroom in that building for yeah, the Yeah, I thought that the well site. was going to be relatively small scale, that it was for that building, and that it would not be used to fill the fire suppression tank. Okay, yeah. Um, which is why I checked no, but I will double check that, because if they're using it to fill that, well, it's well, a one-time I mean, I think for, for purposes of, you know, of the part two, we can... Check yes. Check yes and... Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, water supply demand from the proposed action may exceed safe and sustainable withdrawal capacity rate of the local, local supply or aquifer. Um, I think A is a potential yes. I don't know that B is. I don't know that I would say... Well, like I said, it just depends. If they do try to fill that tank off that, yeah. Then it would be a yes. Right. Yeah, water supply in that area is, is, is terrible. Poor? Well, I'll double check what they're planning to fill that tank with. And if they're filling with well water, we'll check both of those as yes. Right. Um, certainly, I think A can be checked as yes either way because they are, build, they are proposing a, a well. Um, the proposed action may allow or result in residential uses in areas without water and sewer service. That's a no. The proposed action may include or require wastewater discharge to the groundwater. That's potentially yes. They're proposing a septic. The proposed action may result in the construction of water supply wells in locations where groundwater is. Well, or on that one, you know, it's a, it's a one bathroom septic, so I think the impact would be small okay. from, that, from that perspective. So that's a no on D. E, the proposed action may result in the construction of water supply wells in locations where groundwater is or suspected to be contaminated. Um, I'm not under the impression that this groundwater is suspected to be contaminated in any way. Um, Has anybody tested it? The well, they've got wells. I mean, the surrounding community has wells. That doesn't mean that, that, doesn't mean that, that, that it's been tested or that it isn't contaminated. Yeah, no. Real quick, under D, it doesn't say how much discharge or a, a flow rate or anything like that, so... Well, the question is whether it's yes. small, I mean, you know... Well, it just says the proposed action may include or require wastewater discharge. In the right, so the question is, is it a small so, impact or is it a moderate to large impact? Yeah. If you consider that to be a, a moderate to large impact, then any single family house in the town would require an environmental impact statement. Yeah. There is also the argument of cumulative, Correct. right? But which is actually true. down below. But. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, the, I mean, with respect to, and I don't, along the Route 9 corridor, there are wells that have a high sodium content, which I don't believe is considered to be contaminated. Um, you know, the, but, um, you know, it, it, it is, um, it, it makes it that treat, pre-treatment is required. Mm. So, um, you know, whether that's small or, yeah, that's, just, that's, that, that goes to the issue, that only really goes to the issue of potability. Um, so, you know, and, and that's something the health department, again, you know, you can, it, it can be mitigated by the use of bottled water. Um, so, you know, I, I would think that with respect to the, what I know of the, the water supplies in that area, I would think it would be a small, a small impact based on, you know, whether we've got other applications um, in that area. Um, and, you know, there's been some well tests. The only contaminant that I, I'm aware of is, is sodium. Yeah. yeah, I don't even think that's regulated. Chloride is, right. but sodium is more an issue for people who have uh, dietary issues with where they with high sodium. Yeah. <coughs> Okay. Um, so that's an E on, that's a no on E. F, highly specific, the proposed action may require the bulk storage of petroleum or chemical products over groundwater or an aquifer. That's an obvious yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, the proposed action may involve the commercial application of pesticides within 100 feet of potable drinking water or irrigation services. I, that's, that's a no. Um, impact on flooding. The proposed action may result in development in a designated floodway. That's not occurring here. The proposed action may result in the development within a 100-year floodplain. That's not happening. The proposed action may result in development within a 500-year floodplain. That's not happening. Uh, the proposed action may result in or require modification of existing drainage patterns. I don't believe that that's happening here. Um, the proposed action may change flood water flows that contribute to flooding. Uh, I don't believe that that's happening here. Um, if there is a dam located on the site of the proposed action, is the dam in need of repair? I don't believe that there is a dam located on the site. Impacts to air. Um, if the proposed action requires federal or state air emission permits, the action may also emit one or more greenhouse <coughs> gases at or above the following levels. I don't believe that any of these apply. Uh, the proposed action may generate 10 tons a year or more of any one designated hazard as air pollutant or 25 tons per year or more of any combination of such hazardous air pollutants, given that this is a storage facility and not an industrial facility. I don't believe that they're going to be producing any um, hazardous air pollutants. The proposed action may require a state air registration or may produce an emission rate of total contaminants that may exceed five pounds per hour or may include a heat source capable of producing more than 10 million BTUs per hour. That's not happening. This isn't a foundry or something. Um, the proposed action may reach 50% of any of the thresholds in A through C above. That's not happening. Uh, and the proposed action may result in the combustion or thermal treatment of more than one ton of refuse per hour. And that's not happening. Impact on plants and animals. Um, the proposed action may result, uh, may cause reduction in population or loss of individuals of any threatened or endangered species as listed by New York State, the federal government that used the site or found on over or near the site. Um, I, I don't believe so. I don't believe that we're reducing uh, habitat to any degree that could not be mitigated. Um, the proposed action may result in the reduction or degradation of any habitat used um, by any rare, threatened, or endangered species as listed by the New York State or federal government. I pinged this as a yes just because um, the EAF mapper suggested that um, there was potential habitat for blending turtles nearby and that if we are concerned about um, you know, any leakage, any seepage, anything like that, any potential contaminants of the groundwater or the wetlands, Yep. That that would potentially degrade their habitat. 
The proposed action may cause reduction in population or loss of individuals of any species or of special concern or conservation need as listed by New York State or the federal government that use the site. Blah, 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 blah. So just for the record, um, the applicant has provided a threatened and endangered species habitat suitability assessment report dated July 29, 2019. The conclusion of the report is that um, there was no core habitat or potential nesting habitat on the site. Landing turtle individuals could not disperse to the site unimpeded from across Route 9 uh, because of traffic. The site has substantial barriers on all sides that effectively removed the site from being considered potential habitat or being utilized by the species for any permit um, for um, landings, turtles. Um, and then there's a discussion regarding um, Indiana bat and northern long eared <coughs> bat. Um, so, you know, having said that, you know, it's a typical <coughs> environmental report. Um, you know, they can use that, obviously, to, you know, for the submission with respect to this. And, um, you know, ultimately, we'd like to get input from DEC as to, you know, they cons what they consider the sufficiency of this report. Mm -hmm. yeah, so they could, right, so they'll have to still follow up with DEC then. Yeah, I yeah. mean, we, I, don't, I don't think, right. I think that's, you know, on the applicant's part, I think that's, sub you know, the purpose okay, of the right. they, 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 sum right. they could submit it to DEC, let them. Right. Well, submit it as part of, yeah. the, you know, part discuss of it in the scope, yeah, yeah. and then we'll put, make it part of the record, and DEC can review it as part of this. Process. So, Jim, maybe I'm reading this wrong. Is there a difference between A and C? Because I keep rereading them and I don't see a difference. Oh, I guess one is threatened and endangered and the other is any species or special concern or right. conservation. Okay. So, right. So, I mean, C is more of any species across the board, yeah. whereas A is yeah. targeted. Well, then if we're so checking B as potential impact, then um, we would... The issue with respect to C, so now the question is, when you're dealing with, with any species, it would be deer or you know, Squirrels, whatever. And, whatever. And that's more of a, you know, is there a substantial loss of habitat here that would ultimately affect any species? And I, I you know, here I don't think that's the case. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it may be that the reduction in habitat may be an issue with respect to the endangered <coughs> species because you know the habitat's more wouldn't really targeted. We don't take a look. Yeah. The deer could go, you know, to the next property over. Sure. Yeah. I guess that's my question. If we're pinging B, do we ping D? Again, I think the only thing that was like, what's on the EAF mapper as far as um, I don't think they I don't think the EAF mapper looks to any species of special concern. No. Rather than you know, where threatened. So I mean that's that's the distinction. Now I'm looking at it because A and B is rare, threatened, endangered, and then C and D is special concern. Is there a, uh, maybe go take does a the DEC have a list of, of special concern? Does the DEC have, I'm sorry, there was a lot of noise all of a sudden. Um, so does DEC have, so they have a list of, you know, threatened and endur uh, endangered species, which, um, which I think we're all aware of, but mm -hmm. is there um, a list that they put together of any species they of did. special concern? They would have a list of that. But it's but it's not being picked up by the... It doesn't get pinged by the EAF mapper, which is a, right. a web tool that the DEC puts Correct. together. So yeah. Fox, Coyote, anything like that. Kind of falling there. I don't know, I don't know the true. list that well, but um, I think it's, I think it's, it's written. Kind of yeah. It's got that, yeah. It kind of traps everybody in there. So the, spe the uh, species of special concern... Um, insects, 
drag, unnamed dragonfly species, southern sprite, extra striped snake tail, pygmy snake tail, common sand dragon, uh, Baron's buckmore, gear underwing, amphibians or salamanders, uh, spotted turtle, wood turtle, woodland box turtle, eastern spiny shell, soft shell, worm snake. I think it would be safe to say that the site certainly hosts habitat for yeah. a lot of species, probably many species of concern. Um, then what this becomes is a balancing act of um, the significance of the impact. Right. We would obviously hold potential impacts to endangered species much higher than we would potential impacts to Correct. other species. That being said, if we are concerned about the reduction or the degradation of the habitat of endangered or threatened species, the same circumstances could potentially be impacting the habitat of any species or species of right. concern. Um, so that becomes a judgment call of uh, the board. Do they feel that the use of this specific project um, would would you know potentially have a significant environmental impact on uh, the degradation or reduction of that habitat for mm. species or species of concern? No, it does reduce the the habitat. And You're taken and, away from that and area. And same potential leaks that would affect the Blandings turtle um, would would affect the habitat of you know the, yeah. the list the other listed turtles that we just mentioned. Um, the difference is that one is endangered and one is not, or one right. is threatened and one is not. Um, that being said, investigation into one, investigation into B, would look very similar to investigation into D. To D, yes. Yeah, I mean, and that if they are investigating B, they could easily they can investigate, investigate D also. Yes. Yeah. So, yes. The proposed action may diminish the capacity of registered national natural landmark to support the biological community it was established to protect. I'm not aware of any national natural landmarks present. Um, the proposed action may result in the removal of or ground disturbance in any portion of a designated significant natural community. I'm not aware of any designated uh, significant natural community. The proposed action may substantially interfere with nesting, breeding, foraging, or overwintering habitat for the predominant species that, occur, uh, that occupy or use the project site. I was not of the feeling that, uh, given the size of the site, the proposed use of the site, that it would limit any of the species that we have discussed from using the site. Certainly no... Uh, insects or things like that. I mean, there would certainly be a portion of the site that would be fenced off. That portion would no longer be habitat, but there's a considerable area of the site that would not be fenced off. That would continue to serve as habitat. Um, the proposed action requires the conversion of more than 10 acres of forest, grassland, or any other regional or locally important habitat. Uh, I don't think the area of disturbance exceeds 10 acres. Um, the proposed action, commercial, industrial, or recreational projects, uh, involves use of herbicides or pesticides. I don't believe that they're proposing that. Um, that brings us to impact on agricultural resources. We can go through this or we can skip it. I don't think that there are any designated agricultural districts on site or no. would be impacted by this proposed use. So we can skip eight. Um, <coughs> Impact on aesthetic resources uh, is short. Let's go through it. The proposed action may be visible from any official designated federal, state, or local scenic aesthetic, aesthetic resource. I don't believe that that is true. Um, the proposed action may result in the obstruction, elimination, or significant screening of one or more officially designated scenic views. I don't believe that that is true. Uh, the proposed action may be visible from publicly accessible vantage points. Um, it certainly would be visible from... Uh, God, what's the road? Is that same old, old Hopewell? Well, it'd be visible from old Route 9. But that's yeah, old Route 9, I'm sorry. It would not be visible from Route 9, uh, but would be visible from old Route 9. Um, 
that being said, that, that becomes a balancing act. How many people are going to be impacted by the aesthetic presence of this site? If it was visible from Route 9, that would be a lot more than uh, right. the situation of old Route 9. To um, the extent that it's screened, you can mitigate that impact. Exactly. Um, the situation or activity in which viewers are engaged while viewing the proposed action is not going to be disregarded. Uh, the proposed action may cause a diminishment of the public enjoyment and appreciation of a designated aesthetic resource. I don't think that it would be impacting anything like that. Well, this is tourism-based activities. Can you see that from Splashdown if you're there? Probably. I don't think you can no, see no, the no. site from Route 9, yeah. can you? Well, it's from Splashdown. Yeah. Oh, you, you mean like up, place is elevated. up on top yeah. of uh, yeah. a slide or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. It says tourist activities. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. I guess we'll have to go to Splashdown to check that out. Yeah, we'll have to take a field we'll trip, there. A field trip there. Probably yeah. in about another month and a half or two months. Where does that <laughs> weigh in, Jim? What do you think? It's a recreational based activity, for yeah. sure. I mean, basically, yeah. the question is does it diminish your enjoyment of Splashdown? Uh, we won't know, but it's part of the field trip. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, I think we can have a qualified no until Ralph reports back. <laughs> that will be done in um, June. Yeah. Uh, F, there are similar projects visible within the following distance of the proposed project. I don't think that there are similar any project. similar yeah. projects, uh, considering that we're creating the use, and I don't know of another use that would, that would look like this. Um, that brings us to impact on historic and archaeological. Um, that's, a, that's a no. We can skip that. I don't, you know, that. That's usually pinged by the EAF mapper if there's going to be areas of archaeological significance or if there's going to be a historical site across the street that suddenly yeah. is going to be impacted by this. Um, Similar thing with impact on open space and recreation. Um, the proposed action may result in an impairment of natural functions or ecosystems uh, services provided by an undeveloped area, including but not limited to stormwater storage, nutrient cycling, and wildlife habitat. Um, a relatively small area of this site is going to be developed to accommodate the proposed use. Um, much of the site would remain open space and serve the same ecological functions. Um, so I had not pinged that, but um, it, it, it is a big open area, some of which would be fenced off, but um, it was not something that caught my eye that I was going to, that, not something that I thought was going to be an impact, but. Um, and it's not a current recreational resource. Yeah, exactly. Um, the proposed action may result in the loss of a current or future recreational resource. I don't think it's, it's not currently a recreational resource. It has right. no plans to become a recreational resource. Um, the proposed action may eliminate open space or recreational resource in an area with few such resources. Um, I don't think that that is true. We've got plenty. Um, the proposed action may result in the loss of an area now used informally by the community as an open space resource. That's not occurring. Um, Unless, you know, there's pickup baseball games going on there that I don't know about. But um, impact on a critical environmental area, I think we can skip this. This is something that gets pinged on the EAF uh, part one. If, if this was going to be, if this was going to include or be near a critical environmental area, we would have been notified about that. I think the only we have in the town is Rockville Lake. I thought there was something along the creek that... Maybe. I know Wappinger Lake is. The creek might be, I think something came up when we were looking at uh, Over Creek Farms, right. um, that that's a fishery of some kind. Okay. Um, impact on transportation. Um, projected traffic increase may exceed the capacity of the existing road work. Um, we're not anticipating that. The proposed action may result in the construction of paved parking area for 500 or more vehicles. That's not occurring. The proposed action will degrade existing transit access. I don't believe that that is true. 
The proposed action will degrade existing pedestrian or bicycle accommodations. I don't believe that's true. And the proposed action may alter the present pattern of movement of people or goods. Um, it would alter the proposed pattern of goods to the site. There would be a new destination for bulk petroleum trucks to reach the site, but that would be relatively small. Um, however, I did ping other impacts. The proposed action may cause an emergency situation that could impact traffic on New York State Route 9 and cause the need for an evacuation of the surrounding area. So that worst case scenario uh, would trigger an evacuation response, which would certainly have traffic impacts to the surrounding area. You're going to put that in under other? It, it's on mine. I oh, guess okay. It's not on ours. Okay. okay. We just printed out a blank one? Okay. No, that has no, been no, added. No, no, This is the one that you had sent off, but then I think you're, you're going off to... Is that included in this one? This is the this is the one that Barbara has. Um, yeah, because it's not. Which one no, do you? It's have not on the one we're looking at. It's not okay. on the one I have here. That's why. It will certainly be added as. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. F, okay. Right. That that other. So and, it'll and have that other impact on there. Right. So, you know, back to the discussion that I had at the very beginning of this exercise. While this is a a. An, um, an impact that may not necessarily, the likelihood of this impact may not be great. Should that occur, it will have an impact on a lot of people. Um, and, you know, it could be quite disruptive. So even though it may be unlikely to occur, so if it did occur, it would have a substantial right. impact mm -hmm. that should be investigated. Mm -hmm. That's where the potential significant comes in. Correct. Mm -hmm. Um, impact to energy is highly specific. I checked no for the category. It's going to be things like, you know, is it going to need a new substation? Is it going to need improve? Is it going to demand improvements to the existing energy infrastructure? Um, pretty specific earmarks of what would be involved in the project. This project does not reach any of those. Um, 15, impact on noise, odor, and light. Um, I checked off no. I'm, I'm not in the impression that there would be any odor associated with this, but I could be wrong. If there's an odor, there's a problem. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, are, are we sure they're not blasting? I don't believe any blasting is proposed. I think all of the disturbance is towards Route 9, old Route 9, where there is no exposed bedrock. Yeah, but wouldn't that be going through all that bedrock if they're going to bury the tanks? Well, I think they're burying the tanks above ground, are they not? Oh, they're so mounted. they're going to bring in bring fill. material yeah. to put on top over. of them, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I think the last plan showed the um, retaining wall to be built. And then they'll facing right now. Yeah. No, facing the retaining wall will be facing the um, old route now. And okay. then they'll bring the, put the fill on the other side of it where the tanks will be. Um, as far as light, um, I'm, not I'm not anticipating any significant impacts associated with light. Um, noise, there would likely be a noise associated with um, traffic coming and going, dropping off and collecting, um, but I'm not anticipating a significant amount of noise. Um, Depending on time of day. Well, yeah, that's a that's a good question. When is it being dropped off, and when is that noise happening? There wouldn't happening? be light disturbances to any of the residents that live there. Um, from what I remember, it's going to have to be lit up at night for security reasons, if not anything else, right? I think what they had been proposing was um, dimming of those lights outside of the the requirement for security lighting and outside of uh, site utilization. There's no different security lighting requirements on, on a facility like this than other, than like a commercial building? I think that there would be more, um, but there's also a, a pretty robust fence around the perimeter. We have a residence adjacent to it within a thousand feet, I would think. Well, a code doesn't permit light spilling off beyond the property line. Yeah. So. All their foot candles did not extend beyond there's well, like a, that's exactly what I was getting at. Is there is there a requirement, is there a security requirement lighting for more light outside of on something like that? Just similar, like similar like banks, like banks. Oh, yeah, you have, banks, you have the the state law that requires 
minimum amount of lighting. Mm -hmm. um, whether or not there's anything for this, I don't know. The bank lights just the ATM. I believe is the only, and it's again only for an ATM. Yeah. Um, okay. It's in the banking law, I believe. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. That's the only lighting requirement that I'm aware of. Yeah, it's, I, I know that I know that one's come up in the past for us. Yeah. I know that during the application there was um, concern for the security of the site. We discussed lighting. Um, there's certainly lighting proposed for the site, but I don't recall any light trespass beyond uh, beyond the, the property line. And finally, um, impact on human health, uh, that's number 16. Now, a lot of these are highly specific, um, but you don't have the other impacts contribution that I made at the, the bottom. I had checked off all of these as no, and we can go through them. Um, the pro proposed action is located within 1,500 feet of a school, hospital, licensed daycare, uh, nursing home, retirement community. That's no. There's definitely not a daycare on that road. I don't think so. Not within 1,500 feet. Okay. I don't think so. Not within 1,500 feet. Um, the site of the proposed action is currently undergoing remediation. I don't believe that's true. Um, there is a completed emergency spill remediation or a completed environmental site remediation on or adjacent. That's something that the EAF mapper would have identified and, and did not. Um, site of the action is subject to the institutional control limiting the use of the property. Easements are deed restrictions. I don't believe that that is true. The proposed action may affect institutional control measures that were put in place to ensure that the site remains protective uh, of the environmental and human health. Um, I don't believe that there are any control measures on this site. Um, the proposed action has adequate control measures in place to ensure that future generation treatment and or disposal of hazardous waste will be uh, protective of the environment and human health. Um, I believe that's true. Future generation, treatment, and disposal. Um, the only thing that I can think of would be a, you know, if this facility closed down, would there be conditions in place to uh, suitably decommission the tanks? Well, I don't think the tanks are considered to be a hazardous waste. Okay. Because this is limited to hazardous wastes. Okay. Generation treatment of or disposal. Okay. The proposed action involves construction or modification of a solid waste management facility. That's not happening. The proposed action may result uh, in the unearthing of solid or hazardous waste. That's not occurring. The proposed action may result in an increase in the rate of disposal or processing of solid waste. That's not occurring. The proposed action may result in the excavation or other disturbance within 2,000 feet of the site used for the disposal of solid or hazardous waste. Again, it's not happening. The proposed action may result in the mitigation of explosive, uh, in the migration of explosive gases from a landfill or site, uh, up from a landfill site to adjacent off-site structures. There is not a landfill currently on the site. The proposed action may result in the release of contaminated uh, le le leachate, 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 uh, from the project site. Um, I did not know how to pronounce it, but I don't think that it's present. <laughs> no, that's, um, that would be from a land. Yeah, it's in reference to a land. Okay. Yeah. And um, finally, other impacts. Um, um, you don't have this in front of you, but uh, what I have added here and pinged yes is the proposed action involves the storage of um, the storage of hazardous material with limit, uh, limited access points and no access to municipal water in the event of an emergency. I think and, you need to expound on that. Um, basically, the topography of it makes it very difficult for a firefighter to fight this fire. Sure. Um, so the our and town has only volunteer firemen. Mm -hmm. I think that should be mentioned. There's no also paid fire department. So the response is up in the air sometimes. Yeah. I think these things well, should be included. Well, the, there's a in chap in 18. There's a section regarding firefighting. There's a community a service specific okay. section. Um, once we've finished going through, I'll also talk about the uh, EAF part three attachment where I do um, elaborate a little bit on the items in here that have been checked off as well. Uh, as long as this is all. Have it, I, no, that's a very good note. 
having a heavy gas stored up high. Exactly. The yeah. leaks, it goes down to Route 9. The elevation of? Yeah, the elevation of the whole project mm -hmm. would be a problem. Let me that make a definitely note. has to be in there. Let me make a note of that, and I'll make sure that it's included when we get to the EAF yeah. Part 3. I'll make sure that that's included, and if it's not, I'll make a change. Um, is this going to be impact human health? Topography of gas. Um, so that is 16, impact to human health. Um, 17 is the consistency of community plans. The proposed actions, land use components, may be different from or in sharp, sharp contrast to current surrounding land use patterns. I think this is yes because we are yes. creating Definitely. a new use which is by definition different from current surrounding land use patterns. Correct. Um, proposed action will cause the permanent population of the city, town, or village in which the project is located to grow by more than 5%. We have no reason to believe that that's true. The proposed action is inconsistent with local land use plans and zoning regulations. This should be yes. pinged as yes, right. because again, we are creating a new use. A new use for it. Um, the proposed action is inconsistent with any county plans or other regional land use plans. Um, Would that be a yes? I'm not aware of a county plan with respect to this. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know that it is in sharp contrast to only because it's not. I don't, I don't I think, think the county plan. This would be anything other it. than the town zoning regulations. Right. Yeah. Stuff that yeah. This would fall. Okay. Um, the proposed action may cause a change in the density of development that is not supported by existing infrastructure or is distant from existing infrastructure. I don't believe that that would be a result of this project. Uh, the proposed action is located in an er area characterized by low density development that will require newer expanded public infrastructure. Well, yeah, because it would need water would brought need water in there, so that would be an infrastructure thing, right? So, so that would be a yes. Yes. That's F, okay. And G, the proposed action may induce secondary development impacts as an example, residential or commercial development not included in the proposed action. I, I don't, I don't believe so. Um, well, it would need a second um, access point. Well, that's not what it's saying. It's, it's not. That's, that's not, not that. Right. Yeah. That's not development. Okay. It would be like if they put in a use somewhere, and as a result all of the land around it suddenly wants to have high density residential because it's in proximity to something, right? Okay. Um, that's what they're talking about in terms of induced. Uh, same thing with the inverse, right? You create a big residential population and suddenly we want to develop more commercial uh, as, a, as an induced, yeah. Um, that brings us to 18, consistency with community character. The proposed action may replace or eliminate existing facilities, structures, or areas of historic importance to the community. Don't believe that's true. The proposed action may create a demand for additional community services. This has been checked yes, yes. and yes. expanded upon in the EAF Part 3, which we will get to soon. The proposed action may displace affordable or low-income housing in an area where there is a shortage of such. I don't believe that that is true. It's in a commercial district and... Um, yeah, it's not true. Yeah. Um, the proposed action may interfere with the use or enjoyment of officially recognized or designated public resources. I don't believe that that's true, uh, unless Ralph determines that the view of this from the top of Splashdown ruins his enjoyment of the slide. Um, the proposed too. <laughs> yeah. The proposed action is in <laughs> the proposed action is inconsistent with the predominant architectural scale and character. I don't believe that that's true. Um, the proposed action is inconsistent with the character of the existing natural landscape. I don't believe that's true. And those big mounds of dirt. There would be a retaining wall in between yeah. the mounds and yeah. Route 9, old Route 9. Well, they're going to grass that, right? So it looks like it's all. Yeah. 
but then you've Landscape. still got the retaining wall. I don't know. It didn't. Yeah. It in my mind, it didn't rise to a significant impact. I'm sure there will be some impact associated with it, but given the district, the zoning district that it's going into. Well, that's um, not correct. That's mixed use there, right? Or is that it's HB? It's HB. It's highway business. Yeah, highway business. Thanks. So that brings us to the end of the EAF part two. Um, so obviously I will add to the EAF part three with the boxes that we are considering um, that we've added to the list. But um, the original draft reads as such. Um, Criteria one, the proposed action may result in new or additional use of groundwater or may have a potential to introduce contaminants to the groundwater or the aquifer. Um, we don't have that, right? Yeah, that was the, what he sent out two weeks ago. The, uh, the yeah, part three attachment is what the, the name of the PDF file is going to be if you want to find it in your yeah, positive the, email uh, yeah, inbox. Positive letter. declaration yeah. attachment to part three of the full environmental assessment. So. Um, so for that I wrote, uh, as specified in the full environmental assessment form, a substantial wetland exists adjacent to the subject property as well as floodplains and the potential habitat of the endangered landing <coughs> turtle. The planning board believes that the potential may exist for contamination of the water table and or wetland due to seepage and or stormwater runoff of, the, uh, of an accidental spillage or leakage of propane. Um, Criteria two, the proposed action may result in a loss of flora and fauna. Um, again, as specified in the EAF, a substantial wetland exists adjacent to the property. Um, this reads much the same as the first, just that you know, potential leakage or spillage of uh, propane could have a negative uh, effect and result in the loss of flora or fauna. Yep. Criteria three, the proposed action may affect one or more wetlands or other surface water bodies. Again, it's going to read much the same way. We're, you know, there's a, there is an adjacent wetland, and we're concerned about potential impact to that wetland as a result of seepage and or stormwater runoff associated with an accidental spillage or leakage. Uh, the proposed action is inconsistent with the existing community character. Well, back to three. Yeah. Um, also, it should be noted at least based on the documentation currently we have that the 100 foot buffer for the wetland extends onto the property. Um, criteria four, the proposed project is inconsistent with the existing community character. The planning board believes that the potential may exist for significant impact to character and quality of existing communities associated with the zone change proposed uh, to allow the use of propane storage facility in the highway business and airport industrial zoning districts. The planning board feels that there has not been sufficient analysis of the wide-reaching implications such a zoning change could carry. Uh, and that would thereby potentially cause significant adverse impairment to the character or quality of the existing community. I'm going to make a note to change that language text. It's not a sort of change, it is. Does the comprehensive plan come into that at all? No, it doesn't. Based upon this other one, too, the criteria, it's just we still haven't been given the, um, it was an analysis done regarding HB and AI zones. Supposedly it was a letter that was produced. Something that was produced a number of years ago by David Stolman. Um, I don't think it was a report though. I think it was a memo essentially explaining how this, the criteria for the special permit would limit the potential right. sites that this could be hosted on. Um, but I don't think that there was an analysis in what, what that would look like, what kind of impacts to community character that would be. Certainly not as much information as would be provided in uh, an EIS. Right, because I mean, we're doing a secret for the, the zoning change if it's affecting other properties or, right. you know, or does this, 
you know, block out essentially any other property in these zones, and this is basically now turning into a spot zone. Yeah, I think that it affected. That's yeah, I think that, that, that's something. I think it was like two or three. Yeah, I mean, there was a, I believe there was more properties in the AI zone. Yeah. Than in the HB zone that would qualify. And I think that it was fewer was than more, five, but there more. was more in the AI than the HB. Yes. So it wasn't, yeah, this isn't, you know, it, it's not related. There were there were multiple properties that qualified yep. based on the on the size criteria. Um, size and that. frontage, I think, were the two yeah. determin. It was the two main determining right. yeah. factors. I mean, yeah, it's still. I mean, obviously, it's still. You know, it's a significant issue. Yeah, you know, at least at a board because we're. You know, yes. Again, it hasn't been addressed. Yeah, it has not been addressed to your satisfaction, yep. certainly. Who came up with the size of the lot and recommended the size for uh, the um, zoning amendment? I mean, that would have been David Where did that Stone number come Dave, from? Yeah, I mean, that I think it was, it was Oops, basically a criteria that was more or less looking at setbacks from the facility, which would then, you know, in, in all directions, which would give you a footprint. And then based on that, you would you would get you know a minimum lot size, and then it was you know had to have a certain. Do we have access to that? I'd like to read that. Again, I, 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 there may be just I don't know if there was a formal. I don't think there was a report. Yeah. Yeah. I I have a look. Because it seems like a small yeah. lot for a yeah. uh, something of that potential. What's the restriction? Five acres. In the local yeah. law. Um, well, the proposed, the proposed right. change, correct? Yeah, the the, yeah. the tax change. Yeah, this lot is bigger law. than five acres. Right, right. right. I'm just saying. The you, you had said local law. I'm just saying that in the proposed, you know, text amendment. Right. That's yeah, what we're. Correction. That's what we're supposed to be looking at. What's been within the right. proposed text amendment? Yeah. Okay. Who proposed that? Um, well, the the applicant had come and said that they were interested in looking at this use. Um, and then based on that, um, David Stolman had looked at, you know, we had a discussion, I guess, at the town board level as to what zones it would be it would suitable be, for. It, suitable in would be HB or AI, um, which are the two most, you know, commercial or actually more industrial type lot of uh, uses. So, um, you know, those are, the, those are the zones in the town where it, it, industrial uses are permitted. Um, and then looking at that again, David looked at, in essence, what would setbacks be, and based on that, came up with, you know, lot sizes. There is language in there about frontages on yeah, frontages certain class. On the road. And again, it's not, that's not set in stone. That right. Is there should be something about contour, the property, topography, that sort of thing involved in that. I, th I definitely think it makes sense that frontages is one thing, but access right. off of multiple roads or, or access a certain distance away from one another. I know that we've yeah, had from those From different, discussions. right, from... Yeah, you, you want to have access from different from different locations. I mean, you don't want everything from one side as opposed to, you know, multiple sides depending upon what you, you know, might have leaking from there. Okay. And, you know, wind direction. So, I mean, you're probably looking at, you know, um, you know, multiple, ex you know, multiple entrances from different geographic locations. So, the, as far as the frontages goes, at... As it was proposed, the language is the lot on which the facility is located shall not have direct vehicle access to New York State Route 9, mm -hmm. which severely limits the number of HB properties that this proposal would uh, apply to, right? Um, There's language in here about setbacks, security fencing. Anyway. Um, 
So, criteria four. There has been some investigation into this. Um, I certainly do not think that it would it would not satisfy the board. I, I don't think that it has been sufficiently analyzed, particularly as it applies to other lots. Um, but anyway, um, criteria number five, the proposed action is not consistent with adopted land use plans. The planning board believes that there may be conflict between the zone change uh, proposed to allow the use of propane storage facility in the highway business and airport industrial um, and the existing land use plans. The planning board feels that there has not been sufficient analysis of the wide-reaching implications such a, such a change would carry and that would thereby potentially cause significant adverse impacts to existing land use and community plans. And then um, this is where we expand uh, criteria six. The proposed action may result in a change to existing transportation systems. The planning board is concerned that a propane leak from the proposed site storage facility um, or in the transportation to or from the proposed site storage facility could cause an emergency situation that would affect traffic on and around New York State Route 9 and require an emergency evacuation of the surrounding area. The planning board feels that there has not been sufficient analysis into the implications of the effects on traffic an emergency situation would cause, nor has enough study been conducted to demonstrate an emergency evacuation of the surrounding area could be conducted effecti effectively uh, and that would thereby potentially cause a significant adverse impact to existing transportation system. Now, with the discussions that we've had, I would like to add language um, as far as uh, access to the site and the, and the specific topography of the site. <clears throat> Wouldn't they have to uh, have a evacuation plan? Something that they would provide in the EIS? Well, I feel you should mention the fire departments in that. That comes in criteria seven where we talk about um, oh, why am I blanking on that? Um, emergency responders and equipment. Um, but I'll make a note of that there as well. Criteria seven, the proposed action may have an impact on human health. The planning board believes that the potential may exist for a significant emergency requiring emergency response associated with the storage of hazardous materials. Due to limited access points, the lack of municipal water supply on site, the adequacy of the proposed water storage facility on site for the purposes of fire suppression, and the capabilities and available equipment of emergency responders, the planning board is concerned that an emergency would not be able to be suitably responded to and that the proposed propane storage facility would thereby potentially cause significant adverse impairment uh, to human health by creating a potential emergency situation that could not adequately be responded to. Do we want to be a little more specific about um, the fire department saying they can't handle it? Did, they gave us a letter, right? Yeah, yeah letter, the letter's on fire. Would, would you enclose one of those letters with that as an... I don't think we need to. No, um, I mean, the scope is that they have to, you know, in essence, they have to set forth what needs to be provided to handle whatever, you know, emer how, how the emergency can be addressed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's really in the intent of the scope. And, you know, if there's additional yeah, said, equipment no, or sure facilities or personnel that's needed, that additional, you know, emergency action plans, coordination with surrounding departments, yeah. I mean, that's stuff that would all be worked out in the environmental impact statement. That's, that's my idea, that yeah, during the more, EIS process, yeah. the fire department would contribute in a, in a more robust and specific way, and that the applicant would then need to demonstrate um, either how you know how they could mitigate, or you know whether that is altering design or providing equipment or changing access. You know, I mean, it could it could take a bunch of different forms, but the applicant would be expected to demonstrate their ability to Correct. mitigate that. Okay. So that brings us to the end. Um, 
I'm going to go back through the part two um, to the extra boxes that we checked. Uh, some of them I think will fit into the existing criteria and we won't need to add, but I want to double check and make sure and if we need to add criteria, we can add criteria. Um, I'd, like to, I'd like to edit it and make revision to it based on the discussion that we've had tonight. Um, Jim, how should we move forward? Should we put this on an agenda in two weeks? No, I mean, I think it's, I mean, I think you can, if the board wishes to, you know, authorize you to make the change as discussed, I think we should, you know, move forward now. We can vote on it as amended. Yep. Okay. And then so to go ahead and vote on the, uh, to go ahead and vote on a positive declaration as a resolution <coughs> with, with the, the amendments that were discussed this Correct. evening. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, so with that said, um, I'll make that motion. I'll okay. second it. Motion, motion has been made and seconded. Well, a um, we'll do a roll call vote, please. Were you going to say something, Jim? No, we have a, yeah, so there was a, a, a resolution that was provided. There you are, read in the. No, it's just. Yeah, it's got, it's got his, it's got, um, Basically, the resolution, the yep. uh, positive declaration uh, attachment to part three of the full, EF, e, uh, full EAF form. Plus, we also have the, you know, the um, uh, part three form uh, yep. off and the DEC website that's been filled out also. Right. So and we're basically voting upon those two documents. Correct. And then the last one is planning board hereby directs the applicant to prepare and submit a draft scope for the, the DIS as required by Part 617.8B of the Secret Rights. Yes, on the end of the. Yep. Yep. So we just have to, um, we have to set a date for scoping? Yeah, and then. I don't think we have to set a date. No. They come back with a draft scope, at which point we would set a date for. Uh, a one, one thing should be added that this has to be published in the EMB, right? Yes, yes. I will make sure to do that. I don't know that it is included in the resolution. Does it need to be? Or I, I would put it in as number seven, so we could just add it. Okay. But you know, it needs to be published in the environment of those bulletin. Add that to the resolution. Since the applicant's not present, send it to the applicant. Yep. Okay. okay. So we have the scoping date open until we hear back from the applicant. Correct. Which then we'll publish. Well, it, it would which be, then we'll publish a date. At that'll that point. be after the draft is provided. Yeah. Okay. All right. So the we had the amendment. We had a motion and. A second, so we'll go for a roll call vote, please. Aye. 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 Okay. All right. So that's that for this evening regarding that item. Um, the last item that's on the agenda tonight, uh, Popeye's Wappinger Falls Chicken LLC. Um, I believe that's currently being resolved within the building department at this point. They're trying to resolve in the building department, um, but they submit plans that, that mirror the resolution that you provided them. Mm -hmm. If there's any change for that, I'm going to go over the date. Okay. All right. So we'll be discussing that this evening. And... Is there any other business that we need to discuss this evening? Just um, one issue regarding, we had mentioned it earlier, I don't know if all the board members were here. Um, in light of the recent FOIL requests that have been submitted to the town regarding applications that have been pending before the board, um, I had a suggestion that the town um, give all of the individual board members on the zoning board and on the planning board you know, on the, any other boards that applies throughout the town, that they get town email addresses for conducting official business. That way, um, if the 
there's any FOIA requests that come in, communications yeah, right, among good, yeah. applicants and board members that, are, you know, that you need not go through your personal emails to address those FOIAs, but rather through Absolutely. Um, those town email addresses. So I had a discussion with the, the IT consultant for the town as well as uh, the supervisor. And, um, they believe that's certainly appropriate. And I just want to make sure that nobody in it, on the board had any objections with respect to getting a new email address that you had to deal with and put on your phone and yeah. set up. <laughs> um, my understanding is to the IT, um, it's, I believe, a Microsoft <laughs> Office type email address um, that can be um, accessed through most platforms, so it's not, uh, not an address. So, it's not a technology that I don't think anybody so the, the IT consultant will basically set it up for us. for us and give us all some type of written instructions on right. how to access it. Yep. Okay. I mean, and they'll assist you in, in any way if you need to, to set it up. Right. There'll be a contact number yep. to reach out to. All right. Do we have like a townofwapenger.com thing? Or yeah, they have, yeah. So it'd just be like Mark Mark got here, keep us like Mark. Right. Town of Wappinger, yeah. 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 New York, yeah. Yeah. And and NY.com. Okay. Yeah, cool. They have a town's got like an Outlook Exchange account or right. something. I believe that's what it is. Yeah. Okay. So that that makes it easier. They just have to log in through mm -hmm. through that. They just need to be given what they need to log in with. All right. All right. All right. Any other? But it's it's not anything anybody did. It's just. Huh? Just, no, 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 no. Just no. Being proactive. <laughs> they, they are, are private, right? <laughs> for sure. Exactly. They are private, right? So. Yeah. Unless foiled. Yep. Okay. So other than that, is there any other business? Okay. If not, uh, entertain a motion. I'll to make that motion. Second. Motion to adjourn. All right. Motion made. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Thank you.